Hello, welcome to Prigium Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 67 of ASP.NET video series. In this session, we'll discuss about application state variables. Before continuing with the session, I strongly recommend to watch part 64, 65 and 66 of this video series. In the previous sessions of this video series, we have discussed about different techniques to send data from one web form to another. In this session, we'll discuss about application state variables. Let's look at a simple example first. Let's flip to Visual Studio. I have an ASP.NET web application project here with two web forms. On web form one, I have two text box controls where the user can enter their name and email. And once they click on this button, go to web form two, the user will be navigated to web form two.aspx. And on this web form, I have two label controls, which will then display the name and email that we have entered on web form one.aspx. And to do that, we are going to make use of application state variables. So when I double click this button, the event handler gets generated. I want to retrieve the name from the uh, name text box, txt name dot text. And then I want to store that in an application variable. So application of, and I'm going to use the key as name. Okay. And along the same lines, I want to retrieve the email from the email text box and store it in the session, uh, in the application variable. So txt email dot text will give me that. And I'm going to use the key as application of email. And finally, we want to redirect the user to web form two. And I'm using response dot redirect for that tilde character to indicate, you know, within the current web application root directory, I want to go to web form two dot aspx. Okay. So this should navigate the user to webform2.aspx on the page load event of webform2.aspx. I want to retrieve, you know, the name from the application variable. So application of name. And look at that. In an application variable, just like session variable, you can store anything into it. And that's why when you try to retrieve, you know, anything out of application variable, it's going to return that as an object type. Okay, now you have to typecast it to the type that you're expecting. In our case, we are expecting a string back. So I'm going to convert that to a string using two string method. And we are going to assign that to LBL name label. Okay. And along the same lines, I'm going to retrieve the email from the application level variable. So application of email. And then I'm going to store that in LBL email text box. That's it. Now let's go ahead and run this application. So when the web form loads, we should be able to enter the name and email. So let me enter test as the name and test email as the email. So I am able to send the data from web form one to web form two and we are using application level variables for that. Now, one important thing to keep in mind is application state variables are available across all pages and across all sessions. So application state variables are like multi-user global data. Whereas if you look at session state variables, session state variables are available across all pages, but for a given specific session. Session state variables cannot be shared between sessions. The session variable belonging to a specific session cannot be read by another session. Okay, but whereas application level variables are accessible across all pages and across all sessions. That's why we say application state variables are like multi-user global data. And whereas session variables are single user global data. Application state variables are stored on the web server, just like session state variables, application state variables are stored on the web server. But for session state variables, we have other options as well. We can store session state variables either in a state server or we can also store them in a SQL Server database, or, or we can also provide our own custom uh, session storage provider. And we have discussed about that in part 62, 63, 64, 65, and 66 of this video series. But whereas application state variables are always stored on the web server. And application state variables are only cleared when the process hosting the application is restarted, that is, when the application ends. But whereas session state variables are cleared, you know, whenever the timeout of that session is reached, okay? Which means at certain point of time, the session variables are going to be cleared. But then application state variables are cleared only when the process hosting the application is restarted. Let's quickly look at an example. So now I'm going to run this. So when we run this, look at this application state variable. So if I navigate to webform2.aspx as it stands now, look at that. 
that is still being shown. So how long are these name and email are going to stay on the web server? They are going to stay on the web server until the process hosting this application ends or restarts. And what is the process that you know runs this application? The ASP.NET Worker process, which is nothing but W3WP.exe. So if I go to the task manager and click on this show processes from all users, we should see W3WP.exe. So when I end this, that's when you know the application state variables are lost. So now if I make a request for that, okay, and this is another important thing. Look at that. I am accessing, I'm trying to access an application variable, and this is not present because that's null at the moment. Okay, and it's it's throwing a null reference exception. Why? Because you're calling two string method on a null object. So that's why, just like session variables, it makes sense to actually check if the application variable is null before trying to uh, access that and then use two string or any other method on that application level variable. So for, for example, something like this. If application of name not equal to null, something like that, so when you do a null check, if it is null, then that piece of code will not be executed. Do the same thing for email as well. Application state variables are not shared across a web farm or a web garden. Now, if you look at this, the application state variables are actually created on the web server. Now, in a web farm is a situation where the web application is hosted on multiple web servers, and then there is a load balancer. When different clients make requests to your web application, they will go through the load balancer, and the load balancer will identify the web server that is least busy, and it will redirect the request to that web server. Yeah, that's a web farm. Whereas web garden is a situation where you have deployed a web application on a server which has got multiple processors. Okay. Now, in a web farm or a web garden, when a when a client makes a request and when when the request you know first goes to web server one, let's say, the application state variables are created on that web server, and then if the subsequent request is made by this client. And if the load balancer redirects redirects that request to another web server, maybe to web server two, then on this web server, web server we don't have those application state variables, so they are basically not shared between web servers. But whereas if it's the case with session state variables, you know if you want to deploy your web application in a web farm or a web garden situation, and you want the session state variables to be available across all web servers, then we have the choice of uh, choosing an out of process session state mode, which is you know either state server or SQL server. But with application state variables, they're always stored on the web server. You don't have an alternative there. Okay. So the application state variables are not available on a web farm or a web garden. Application state variables are not thread safe. So application state variables have global access and all sessions can read and write to them. So there are there could be concurrency related issues. That's why you have to synchronize access to an application level variable. That's why application object provides a lock and unlock methods. Now before you try to modify you know an application level variable you you call the application dot lock which ensures that in a multi threaded environment you know when multiple threads are trying to access that variable you know only one thread can enter you know this piece of code and change that variable if at that point of time if there are other requests you know try to come in come in you know those will be queued until the unlock method is called by the current thread which is modifying the value. This way we can ensure that only one thread is able to modify that variable at any given point of time. So make sure you always use this lock and unlock methods to ensure you know, thread synchronization so that we can avoid race conditions, deadlocks and access violations. And in this example, if you look at this, we are using application state variables in a wrong way. You know, if the purpose is just to send data from one web form to another, you know, you can use any of these techniques from one from one to five. Application state variables should not really be we shouldn't be using application state variables for the you know sake of just sending data from one web form to another because they will be there in the memory for a very long time. And then the application state variables are 
multi-user global data so one user session can change those values you know the values belonging to another session okay so if the requirement is just to send data from one web form to another web form consider other alternatives don't use application state variables you know but in an interview they could ask you what are the different techniques to send data from one web form to another we can say application state variables you know it's possible to send data using application state variables from one web form to another but we shouldn't really be using application state variables for that purpose so use application state variables only when the variables need to have global access and when you need them for entire time during the lifetime of an application from when the application starts to when it terminates now if you want uh, you know global access for certain variables and for certain duration then we have another object called cache object we'll be talking about cache object in a later video session but cache object can be used for that purpose because whatever you store in a cache object has global access it can be accessed anywhere but then cache a cache object can have an expiry set so it's so it's guaranteed to be you know cleared at a certain point of time depending on the expiry time On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.